What's going on everybody? Barrett here back again with Specatech. Welcome to my channel. In today's video we're going to be discussing having a tower speaker as a center speaker. But first, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe and tick the little bell icon so you can be notified when my next video drops. We're going to get right into this video today guys, right after the intro. Alright guys, so as I said, today we're going to be talking about using a tower speaker as your center speaker. We're going to discuss uh, some of the technical side of it uh, with comb filtering and uh, lobbing and I'm going to talk about the benefits uh, that I experienced and some of the drawbacks that I experienced as well. Alright, so first guys, let's talk about some of the different variations of center speakers. Uh, for the most part, um, when people think of a center speaker, they think of the horizontally aligned uh, center speaker. So usually how they're set up is either a mid and a mid with a tweeter in the middle, or if you get a nested uh, tweeter, you can have it where it's a mid and, the, and uh, the tweeter's above the two mids. You can have two mids and then a tweeter and then two mids. So there's many different variations of a traditional, uh, or what would be considered a traditional center speaker, but they all run off a similar design, which is horizontally aligned drivers. So all the drivers are on a horizontal plane. They're all beside each other or next to each other uh, in the cabinet. All right, so you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, what's wrong with that? Why doesn't that work? And it does. Uh, so first, let me say that I'm not saying that that type of speaker is a bad speaker or uh, you shouldn't use those at all. Uh, they sound like garbage. I'm not saying any of that. For the most part, that's what I've used in my systems, which was horizontally aligned centers. And the reason that is, the reason they align them that way is because it works better for those with a television type setup. Um, because they're horizontally aligned, it makes them short. So you can put them on a TV stand, you can put them underneath the TV, you can put them above the TV in some uh, circumstances. They have TV mounts with the uh, speak center speaker mount above the TV. Uh, but that's why they're designed that way, is for convenience and ease of use. It's not necessarily designed that way for the best acoustical performance. And the reason that is, is because you run into what's called comb filtering and lobbing. I don't understand all the science behind this myself, so I'm not going to sit here and try and explain things that I don't understand. Uh, what I will do is give you some of the basics uh, for, for what I do understand. So when you have horizontally aligned drivers, you're going to run into uh, lobbing and comb filtering because if you're sitting in the sweet spot, both those drivers are equal distance from you, you're not really gonna notice a difference. Uh, so in the sweet spot, a horizontally aligned speaker isn't necessarily a bad thing. But once you start moving to the sides, now this driver is far away, more far away than this driver from somebody sitting, say, to the right of me or to the left of me, this driver is gonna be farther away from them. So what ends up happening is the frequencies uh, can somewhat work against each other. Um, so you get degradation in sound. So with that, you get a poor or less than ideal horizontal dispersion of sound versus a vertical dispersion of sound. So on the vertical plane, you're not gonna have the same comb filtering or lobbing. The opposite can be said for a vertically aligned uh, speaker like the uh, RP8000F behind me here. So when you have drivers aligned vertically, you're going to have a better horizontal dispersion. So those of you, those that will be sitting beside you are going to get basically the same experience that you in the sweet spot are getting because the dispersion horizontally uh, is better. You are going to run into comb filtering and lobbing on the vertical plane though. And I'll get into a little bit more of that later as to what drawback that may have. So that's pretty much how I understand it guys. Um, I have done some reading on this. I do understand the basics and hopefully I've been able to relay the basics to you guys. So long story short, if you do have horizontally aligned drivers, uh, they can uh, essentially work against each other when you're off axis to the center of that speaker, which is why I say it's less than ideal, not necessarily that you just shouldn't do it or that it's absolutely wrong, but it is definitely less than ideal. So that being said, I decided to try a tower speaker as my center speaker up until uh, fairly recently, I had always used horizontally aligned uh, center speakers, uh, but recently I've switched over to a tower speaker uh, or a vertically aligned uh, driver speaker. So in this video, I will show you uh, my front stage for reference, but if you do want to see my home theater in more detail, if you click in the top right hand corner, um, you can watch that video once you finish watching this one. All right, so let's discuss uh, first the benefits uh, that I found after switching from a horizontally aligned speaker or center speaker to a tower speaker. So first of all, one thing that I noticed was the price. Um, when I bought my RP504C uh, center speaker, I believe I paid somewhere around $800 Canadian. Um, my local Klipsch dealer did give me a discount, so that's not retail, it's quite a bit uh, below retail. And when I bought my RP8000F for my center speaker, 
Uh, again, I did not pay retail. I got a significant discount, but I paid $699 Canadian for that speaker. So I actually saved money going to a tower speaker versus the center speaker. So that's uh, one benefit. So the next thing that I find to be a benefit is the aesthetics. I just like uh, seeing three identical speakers in my front stage. Uh, it does look nice to me, and not that the 504C didn't look nice. I did like the look of that center speaker as well. I just prefer um, the LCR looking identical. It just has a nice aesthetic appeal to it. And with having three identical speakers in the front, um, you're basically perfectly timber matched. I'm sure you've heard uh, people use that term before. So that's why uh, speaker companies will develop uh, a left and right speaker and a center speaker that is what they call timber matched. What that means is basically the sound signature is the same. So when the sound is panning from one speaker, say to the center or to the right, you're not gonna hear a difference between the sound of those speakers. There's not gonna be a significant difference in the sound while, while it's panning. Um, although when you switch to three identical towers, obviously that is the ideal situation because you have three identical speakers, they're all going to sound exactly the same. So that's somewhat of a benefit in performance. Uh, the other benefit in performance when I switched from the 504C to the RP8000F is I did find that the tower speaker is obviously a little bit more rich, just all around a little bit better performance. I mean, you do have a bigger cabinet there. Tower speakers for the most part are always going to outperform their center speaker counterpart. Obviously there's a lot to unpack there. I mean, there could be center speakers that would outperform a tower. It all depends on cabinet size, drivers, and that sort of thing. But generally speaking, a tower speaker is gonna outperform a center speaker. So one example in particular for me is when I would push the 504C to its limits. I never pushed it past reference volume, but you could tell like during a, a bass heavy and a heavy action scene, it was starting to reach its limits a little bit. Not necessarily like full on distortion, but you could tell it, it wasn't happy. Let's put it that way. Um, not that it sounded bad. Uh, those speakers are a great speaker. They can, they do handle a lot, but it just can't handle quite the same amount as the RP8000F. So when I switched to the RP8000F, um, I don't have that problem. I've never heard it necessarily kind of reaching its limits or just asking for a little bit of mercy maybe, I guess is a way to put it. One of the main benefits to switching to a tower for a center speaker is gonna be the horizontal dispersion. So as I discussed earlier, when you have horizontally aligned speakers, you're gonna run into a problem with horizontal dispersion. When you have vertically aligned speakers, you have better horizontal dispersion. So those people sitting beside you are not gonna have that problem with the vertically aligned speaker versus a horizontal, uh, horizontally aligned center speaker. So the person sitting to the left and right of you should get the exact same sound that you're getting sitting in the sweet spot. As with the horizontally aligned speaker, there is gonna be a little bit of sound degradation to those sitting to the right and to the left of the sweet spot. All right, let's discuss my specific drawbacks from switching to a tower speaker as my center speaker. With a vertically aligned tower speaker, you aren't gonna have an issue with horizontal dispersion, but you now are gonna have an issue with vertical dispersion. So a horizontally aligned speaker is gonna have degradation on the horizontal dispersion. A vertically aligned speaker is gonna have degradation uh, or lobbing errors, comb filtering on the vertical dispersion. So one issue that uh, is specific to me, because I have the speaker below my TV, uh, which is kind of a unique situation. Not a lot of people do it that way. I had recently decided to mount my TV to the ceiling, uh, so it was already that high before I bought the tower speaker. That was not the reason I mounted my, my TV that high to begin with. Uh, the reason I have my TV a little bit higher than uh, what most people would consider ideal is because when I'm watching and the way we watch, we all have recliners, so we're all going to be slightly reclined. Uh, which automatically puts your eyes a little bit higher up. So it, it's actually more comfortable for us to have the television raised up like that than it is to have it, say, eye level when you're sitting facing straight because we're always tilted back, uh, reclined. So in our situation, it works very well. So with my TV being that high, uh, it just worked out that the uh, tower speaker fit right underneath it. I believe I may have maybe half an inch from the bottom of the TV to the top of the speaker. So it is about as close as it can get to the television. But that being said, I did notice uh, after switching that I had a little bit more issue tricking my ears, so to speak, um, into believing that the sounds or the voices were coming from the mouths on the TV. So as soon as you think about it, you realize now that the sound is coming from um, right below the TV as opposed to coming from their mouths on the TV. As soon as you allow the immersion to kind of take over and you get into the movie and you stop thinking about that, 
um, then you, you don't hear that anymore. Uh, so your, your ears do believe that the sound is coming from their mouths. But again, as soon as you think about it, now your ears are able to locate that sound below the TV. So in my situation, um, that aspect is actually less than ideal. But for those of you with an acoustically transparent screen and a projector, obviously that's not gonna be a problem for you. The speaker is gonna be behind the screen. So the sound is actually coming from the screen. So there's no need to even trick your ears because the sound is actually coming from right behind the screen. So for those of you that may have your TV mounted like me and you're thinking, oh, well maybe I'll switch to a tower speaker, just keep that in mind. Uh, that is something that I experienced and it is most likely unique to my situation because of how my system is designed. And that's the only drawback that, um, that I experienced is basically having that vertical dispersion issue. Um, and obviously having the speaker below the TV is, is contributing to that factor as well. It's not just the dispersion issue, but I think it does play a part. Hopefully in the future, uh, when I do get a dedicated room, um, then I am gonna switch to a projector system and I'm gonna switch to uh, acoustically transparent screen. Although I do always wanna keep my television because I do play games and I prefer having a television for gaming. So hopefully this video did help you guys. Um, if you are thinking of switching to a tower speaker for your center, um, if you did like this, this content, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, it does help out the channel and if you are interested in learning more of the technical or the scientific side of uh, comb filtering and lobbing there's plenty of information on google really all you have to do is type in uh, comb filtering or if you want it specific to center speakers and just center speaker comb filtering or lobbing and there's plenty of information online regarding this um, all right guys so that pretty much sums up the video if you are new here make sure you subscribe click the little bell icon so you'll be notified about my next videos and as always, guys, stay techy.